Hi, my name is Chris, and today I want to show you how you can actually live stream to Instagram from OBS, XSplit, or any other kind of streaming software that supports RTMP streams. Live streaming is an interesting medium, and especially in this crazy time of Corona, now it has become very, very interesting and also very, very popular. Now, I want to show you a way how you can actually live stream from your high-end setup that you may also use for other live streams on YouTube, Twitch, or other platforms like Facebook, but you can use the same thing to also stream to Instagram. Now, please consider that this is a hack of a solution. It may not work in the future, Instagram may change their policies, or they may actually introduce a way to officially do something like this. But as of right now, this is a solution that works, and it is giving you the option to actually make a interesting live stream with your whole equipment from your live streaming setup. Now, let's jump onto the screen, and I'm going to show you what you need and how you can do this. Here on the screen, you can actually already see the application that I'm going to recommend you use for this. It is called Yellow Duck, and it's available for Mac as well as for Windows. The interesting thing about this application is that it basically is a local application that is stored on your computer, and as far as I, I'm aware, this does not transmit your data to another server except for Instagram. Now, there are actually other systems, in this case, for example, instafeed.com, which is also a possibility. However, for one, it costs money, and for two, it is run on an external server, and you will have to enter your login details to your Instagram account on this website. So you either have to trust them or know that nothing is going to happen or change your login information as needed. This is actually something that might be able to give you a little bit of a better experience because this actually could automatically sync to your OBS so that when you go live, it also goes live on Instagram. However, again, it is with a cavity that it one costs money if you do more than five streams. And for a second, you have to give your details to a website. Now, going with Yellow Duck, you download the Mac app. And once you have that downloaded, you can already close down your browser. And then you open the Yellow Duck application. Now, there is an interesting way of how this actually works. Number one, you have to log in. With that, you have to set whether or not to allow commenting and whether or not to save the video as a story for after the Instagram feed ends. Once you are done with this, on, you click Login Start. Then Yellow Duck actually will already start the live stream for you. Now, this is important because at the beginning of your live stream, they will actually automatically start streaming a black screen, which basically is just Instagram not having a signal yet, but already starting the sending. Once you have clicked Login and Start, you will then be provided with a URL, which is your RTMP server destination and your RTMP streaming key. Those are the details that you will then plug into OBS to actually stream toward that server. And once you do, the black screen on your phone or on the Instagram feed will also disappear and will be replaced with your video feed. Before we actually go in and do that, as I demonstrated, I want to also talk about the different setup that you may want to be doing for Instagram Live. Of course, Instagram Live is something that is in the vertical 9 by 16 instead of 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This means that either you change that in your OBS setup to that Instagram feed settings, or you trust Instagram to figure it out. Interestingly, I actually found out streaming a normal 16 by 9 usual stream to Instagram will give you pretty much the exact same result as doing a specific one because Instagram simply crops the right and left side away so that it is left with the 9 by 16 aspect ratio in the center of your 16 by 9 screen. Now, if you want to specifically stream to Instagram and do the design and everything, then the setup in OBS would work like this. Inside of OBS, we would go to Preferences. Ideally, of course, creating your own profile for these settings because we are going to change the canvas and everything. So here you go to the canvas. You can either just return or reverse those numbers, 1080 by 1080 by 1920, and then also reverse those numbers down below. So we have a 1080 by 920. Now, there are recommendations in terms of the resolution to be using here. One recommendation is also to use this here, which is also 9 by 16, 
but not as big of a quality. But if you test those things out, it might actually turn out that the quality would be better if you stream at this resolution because it is not re-encoded by Instagram. However, this may change in the future that they also start streaming higher quality content. So I'm going to just do the 1080 by 1920. So 1080 by 1920. So these are the video settings. With audio, I usually just leave that alone, either do the sample rate 441 or 48. And in the output tab, it depends on which encoder is best for you. Personally, I like to use the hardware encoder, even though it has a variable bit rate, but I just limit the bit rate so that it basically just tries to stay in this range. Of course, keyframe interval to two, profile to whatever you want, and with that, you're done. And as you can see now, immediately the image actually just jumped to the 9 by 16 aspect ratio. And with that, we now can do all kinds of things. For example, you could add pictures at the top and bottom or some kind of text element or something and telling people about what you are doing on other platforms. Now, of course, you could also do something like this, which would look very weird, but you can also reset the transform and just resize until you have the same size as this. And with that, we have myself in the center. And now I could stream this with yellow duck to Instagram and it then just streams the center of my camera. Now, interestingly, you can of course also flip your camera upside down to actually stream in the best possible quality, for example. And if you do that, we can actually just go to transform, edit transform. There we have a rotation. So we go 90 degrees, and zero, zero, top left. And there we go. And as you can see now, we have this camera flipped over to this aspect ratio. And if I align it properly, it fits. Now, of course, I don't have my MacBook flipped over right now. That's why you see it the wrong way. But if I actually would do that, I would actually be streaming vertical video in 1080p to Instagram. Of course, you also want to have an audio source, some type of microphone available. In this case, for example, I just have the built-in microphone, but you could use whichever microphone you have connected, even a high quality USB microphone. If you use a CamLink and a DSLR or a EOS R or some type of other camera, you could also record the audio that you are attaching to that camera with that going in here and use the CamLink audio. But now we are having it set up this way with the internal microphone just for test purposes. Now I'm showing you the iPhone screen as well as the desktop here, because now we are going to go into yellow duck here. We're going to click the login and start. As I've mentioned, I set this up already. And now that we have plugged in this information, we actually logged in, started the live stream. However, what you will find is that the live stream actually starts with a black screen and we're going to have to copy this RTMP URL, go into the OBS settings, into stream, go to custom, plug that in here, and then copy the stream key as well. Click OK and start streaming. Yes. And with that, on the phone, ideally, your stream will start. And you have to keep the application actually open because that's how you actually save and finish the live stream. And on the iPhone, with your own user, you're not going to be able to see whether or not you are live. And that way you actually have to make sure with a secondary account, for example. Now, reloading this profile, here you can see that now we have the live stream working. And if I click the save and finish, Yes, this will actually end a live stream on Instagram. And we can see that in a second here on the screen as well. Now, this is great to up your quality in your Instagram live stream, integrate different functionalities, as well as potentially having multiple angles, multiple cameras, maybe use the NDI tools and resources that I shared before in, for example, using a Skype caller in a live stream setting and also any other type of media that you want to use. Videos, you can use photos and uh, text elements, such things. 
A couple of important things to note, however, are the Instagram live streams tend to end after one hour. So you are kind of limited to just streaming for one hour at a time. At least that has been my experience with different times that we've tried this. The other thing that you can also do is you can actually set this up with restreaming if you have a premium account on Restream.io, I think is the website, you can actually use a custom destination there. Alternatively, you can also run your own RTMP Restreaming server, and I might have a couple of videos about that in the future. Overall, I think this is a great way of increasing your quality of Instagram live streams. And if you have any more questions, you can of course leave those in the comment section down below, and I will either try to answer them there, or I will make a video specifically about that topic. Now, I hope you can increase your Instagram live streaming quality by doing this, or you can restream whatever you are doing on other platforms also to Instagram for your followers to see that you're doing things on different platforms. With all that said, I hope you're staying safe, healthy, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.